Wow, this is kind of crazy. Yesterday, I made this greeting video for our website and I had such a joy in my spirit. It was so much fun for me to share my testimony and the Word of God. And I thought, wow, this is it. Um, it's, it's such an anointed video, super. And what happened then is, when I was finished with everything, I checked the data and I had recorded the whole video with a really good microphone and my logic program here in our studio. And I thought, wow, this, will, this is going to be so great. And I tried to save the track from logic. And this has never happened to me ever before. When saving this track, all the data was lost. All the microphone tracks, I had two microphones, two really good, the Neumann and the AKG, and everything was lost. So I'm sorry, guys, uh, the sound of this video is really bad. The normal sound should be like you hear it now. That's the sound. I want to produce videos with Glory Media. And I wanted to take this opportunity and use it for good. Um, let's go to the Word of God. Romans chapter 8. There is this amazing scripture in Romans chapter 8 where it says, I read from the Amplified Bible here, we are assured and know that all things work together for good. We are assured and know that all things work together for good. For whom? For those who love God. For those who are, who are loving Him. The ones who call themselves lovers of God. All things have to work together for good. That's one of the reasons why I say the number one priority in your life is be a passionate lover of God. If you love Him with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, you are fulfilling the first and the highest commandment. And that's what it's all about. Our life is about learning to be lovers of God. To live our lives totally in a love relationship with Jesus. And I tell you, that is not so easy as it sounds. Because every day we have so many obstacles that are coming against us, that are trying to burden our heart and trying to put worries or anger or anxiety in our hearts. And this is why I want to use this opportunity. Yesterday night, I tell you, now after 25 years, at least I've learned not to be angry, not to shout at my laptop, not to hate Apple and for me, the, the software not performing perfectly right. I don't know what the problem is. But I tell you, over years and years and years, I remember there were so many times, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when I had a service and I had this amazing message and that anointing was so powerful. And then I went to the media table and I asked the guy, hey, did you record this message? Could I get a copy from it? It was so powerful. It was so good. And then he looked at him and said, oh, no, I'm sorry. I forgot to press this button. And I went, oh, I could kill this person. <laughs> and afterwards, I had to repent. And today, I want to give you some keys out of that. I don't say I'm perfect, but the truth is I still use the video. I still put it on the website, even with bad sound on the microphone because I know the presence of God is precious. And when it blessed me, it can bless you. When the Word of God strengthens me, it can also strengthen others. And I know the difference, folks. So many times, not many times, but sometimes, I preached a message because I had to preach and it was time for the Bible study. 
and inside I made words and words and words, but at the end of the day, I felt empty. That's not the will of God for no preacher on the world. The will of God is to strengthen us. And while his river of living water is flowing through me, I get encouraged. I get lifted up. The joy is increasing. The love is increasing. The power is increasing. And at the same time, other people can be blessed. That's the way Jesus wants it. And now I want to share with you Romans 8, 28 says that things have to work together for good. And now you're asking, how can it be that such a mistake works together for good? I tell you a few reasons. Number one, patience is a fruit of the Spirit. And we all need to learn patience and enduring and long-suffering. These are words we do not like. But in Revelation 1, 9, there's an amazing scripture. Turn to it. I need to look it up. Revelation 1, 9, where the Apostle John, he's writing the introduction to his revelation. And then he says, hey folks, I write this to you as a brother. Verse 9 from chapter 1. And he says, Jesus says, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And then this, he says, I, John, your brother and companion with you. And now he says, companion with you in three things. In the tribulation and the kingdom and patient endurance in Jesus Christ. So he says, I'm a companion, I'm your companion in three things that are always in the package of being in Christ. It's three things. It's tribulation, clipsis in Greek, bedrängnis in German. It's not nice, no. And Jesus says in the Gospel of John, in the world you will have this tribulation. You will have this tlipsis. You will have this anxiety. You will have it. Surely you will have it. There's no doubt. You will have this in this world. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Be of good cheer. I have endured this world. And I've overcome it. And because I overcome, you can also overcome. That's why Paul in Romans 8.37 says, in all of this, we are more than conquerors, more than overcome us through the one who loved us, not through our own strength, not through our own power, but because Jesus is in us. And every time you are falling, he lifts you up. Every time you are weak, he is strong. Every time you feel like I cannot go on, he picks you up and says, yes, you can, because I could. I can. He was victorious on the cross. Once God gave me a song, and he's, this song said, For the Lord is our God, and He is our fortress. I'm singing it faster. We will go from strength to strength, and we will be victorious. For Jesus was on the cross. Jesus was on the cross, and He will be for us today in these words the message is because he's our god and he's our fortress we will go from strength to strength and we will be victorious because jesus was on the cross and he was not there alone he was not there for himself he was on the cross for us he was on the cross for you and me. He hung there to be victorious for us, to overcome for us. And he prayed and said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. And he overcame with perfect love. And then he died and rose again. And now this type of Holy Spirit, 
that Holy Spirit, that is perfect love, he poured out into our hearts. So you, if you understand the tribulation and patience, enduring and long suffering are in the package together with the kingdom, being a royal priest. So many Christians, they only want to have the kingdom, the blessing, the lordship, the glory, the glory. We want the glory. But you and I, we know we don't want the suffering. We don't want the cross. You know what the cross is so many years i could not bring this together one day i was like wow god you're the god of glory the god of blessing and the next day i was like but jesus said deny yourself and take up your cross and step by step i'm bringing it together the answer is jesus wants to bless you he wants to give you the desires of your heart that's why he says in psalm 37 Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. You know what the desire of my heart is? The desire of my heart and of your heart, if you are born from above, is to be able to love, to be able to rejoice in all things, to be able to be so patient that nothing, 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 could bring us out of that peace of God. I know, know there are some people like uh, Brother Den Mola. I've heard a lot of us preaching and I'm blessed because I know it's truth in Jesus. It's truth. And I've experienced the same. And I could say I'm far behind him. I, there's so many things I need to learn. I've got seven kids and so many times I lost my temper so many times. I was not able to stay patient. And you know what? This grieved my spirit. It hurt myself. And it, I can feel Jesus standing there. Wow, I saw your heart and I wanted to teach you, but you would not listen. You know, the desire of my heart is to be patient. And if you're truly, if you're truly a follower of Christ, it's the desire of your heart. And many times we have to go through testings and tribulations so that God can teach us to be patient. And our flesh doesn't like it. I know our fourth child, Magdalena, she was in intensive care for four months after her premature birth. She came to this world with 732 grams, less than a kilo. And we didn't like it. Our flesh didn't like it. No, it didn't feel so good. But we had to go through it. And that's what James says. In James chapter 1, would you turn to it? Because you and I, we want to learn, right? We want to learn to live in the glory. That's what this channel is about. That's what following Jesus is about. We want to learn to live a life of an overcomer. And you have to understand that trials and tribulations are in the package. James 1.3 Be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith Bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience. Be assured. Be assured and know that God has a reason. And then in verse 2, James said, Consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, whenever you are <laughs> enveloped in ore and counter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. Count it for pure joy. There should be better translations. I know it in German by heart. Count it pure joy. So many of us, we get angry. We say, we ask God again and again, God, please give me a life without testings and trials. You know what this is? This is stupid. 
This prayer is stupid. I got once a revelation from God that trials and testings for us should be like weightlifting. Like going to exercise in a fitness club. And you need weights. You need something to strengthen you so your muscles can grow. That your, your faith can grow. Your, your faith can become strong. So you need obstacles. You need hindrances. You need something that your faith gets stronger. And if we pray, oh God, help me to become a blessed couch potato. Help me. <laughs> that I wouldn't have any trials. I want to be so victorious that I know uh, where would see a problem again. This is crazy. You know what we should pray? Like Paul said it in Ephesians 6. Be strong in the Lord. Become strong. You should pray, God, help me to become so strong that whatever test comes, and if the test is that your child dies, oh my God, I don't want it. But I know a good sister that had experienced it, that her lo beloved son would die with an overdose, but still he was saved. But it's so painful. I know some Christians, they lost a child. In Germany, we had a Christian family. And their like 12-year-old, I think, son was sexually abused and killed by his stupid German. That is crazy. I know a German family that went to Turkey to be missionaries. Uh, this sister is called Family Geske. And you may, may have heard of that missionary. He and two other Turkish men, they were tortured about an hour, cut into pieces alive by some crazy Turkish people. And you know what? Up to today, the Turkish government was not able to really sentence and condemn these young, stupid kids that killed them. This can be so painful to lose your husband. Have your husband cut into pieces. It's horrible. I don't want it. I don't want to lose my wife. I don't want to lose a person. I don't want to lose my parents. I don't want to lose my kids. But the truth is, in this world, we have tribulations. And I tell you, God knows about tribulations. So many people are angry upon God. I tell you, so many people, they're angry on God. They say, God, if you're real, why did you allow my mother to die? Why did you allow this to happen or that to happen? I tell you, if you want to understand this question, why? God, why did you allow this? You have to get another answer. The answer is, I suffered even more. I know all your pain. It's in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. <clears throat> there it says, We have a high priest that knows all our weaknesses and all our sufferings. Chapter 4. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weakness and infirmities. An inability, but we have one who has been tempted in every respect as we are, yet without sinning. Jesus knows. Jesus knows. We should never forget. If we come into trials and temptations, Jesus suffered even more. That's why on purpose he chose, chose 12 good friends. And one was cheating on him and betraying him and selling him. How does it feel if a good friend in whom you three years invested into, like Judas, just sells you for 30 silver coins? How does it feel if another good friend whom you invested into three years, teaching him everything you knew, he swears and says, 
by God, I swear, I will not leave you. I will stick with you to the end. I'm your best friend. If he promises that, and within the next 12 hours, three times, he denies that he even knows you. How must this feel? I tell you what, if your very best friend is so mean to you, it's one of the hardest things for our heart. It's so, so painful. I've experienced it sometimes. If good friends kick you in the ass, if good friends kick you in the back, that is painful. That's what happens in divorces. Your best friend who said, I will love you forever. One day he turns around and says, I hate you. Get out of my eyes. That is painful, but Jesus knows it. Jesus knows. Yes, Jesus knows. And he understands. And he went through this for you and for me. Why? So that he could help us. That's what if Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us then feel lessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in good time for every need in the right time you can find mercy and grace at the right time you can find mercy and grace you can find that patience you can find that power to overcome you can find new hope you can get comfort if you just come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. He said, come to me, all you heavy laden and, and burdened. Come to me, come, come, come. You need to come right now. You need to come in the time when you are in trial, when you feel like falling. God taught me, if, you've, if you're just in the moment of stumbling and if you're in the trial and you feel, I'm so weak, God, I cannot make it, start praying. Start praying in tongues. Lord, help me. Start praying in the Spirit. Start crying out to Jesus. Say, God, help me, help me, help me. Pour out your heart. Once God gave me four steps to freedom, and he said, number one step is pour out your heart before God. Just pour out all these tears. Pour out all this discouragement. Start weeping before God and then cry out and say, God, help me. I'm too weak. Help me that I want to forgive, that I want to get up again. Sometimes we don't even want to get up again. We're so discouraged. We lay on the floor and we say, I want to be on the floor. I want to be on the ground. I deserved it. I don't want to get up. That's the spirit of depression. But God told me, in that moment, pour out your heart and then pray, God, I don't even want to get up. Help me that I start wanting again. That's the first step after, I have your, after you have poured out your heart. Help me that I even start wanting again. Because Philippians 2, I think 13 says, God is it who works the willing and the fulfilling in our heart. He can turn your heart. He's the God of all comfort, says 2 Corinthians 1, 3. And He knows how to comfort our heart, even if we don't know how. If you've lost a child, if you went through a divorce, if you went through such a pain that you think this is impossible, why do I live on this earth? I don't want any more. If that's you, I want to pray with you right now. <laughs> this is the Spirit of God who's fighting for you and says, I want you to stand up again. I don't want you to kill yourself. No, you don't need to. Because Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you. And he's ready to help you up again. <laughs> he's reaching out his hand. There's so many people in depression. 
You see, this is what, what's happening here. God told me he wants to use me through the internet to help so many people. He's here. He's right with you. He's right with you. Come up, pray with me. Say, Jesus, Jesus, here I am. I come with wide, wide open hands. Please let me see your holy face. I know you're full of loving grace. Jesus, Jesus, I need you. Because what I want, I just can't do. To do your will is still a fight. Because flesh brings death, but your spirit's life. Now pray with me, Jesus, Jesus, I surrender. Take me with your loving, tender. Come and send your holy fire and burn away my flesh desire. God bless you. I know that right now, the spirit of comfort is there. I'm going to go to this piano. I'm going to sing this song for you, which has just started. God bless you. Amen.